Hey, game makers. Let's game dev. I have here a blank project. Many of us have seen many of these screens, and they can be a bit intimidating. But before we start making any changes in here, there is one very, very important step we must take for any project, anything. Anything that you're ever going to want to come back to in the future, you need to do this. So despite what the, the previous screen just said, this kind of is a tutorial. We all need to know how to do this. There's tons of tutorials out there. I'm going to add one more uh, to that stack because it is that important. We're going to talk about source control. Source control is how you keep your project safe. Your computer explodes, you've still got your project. You accidentally delete it all, it gets corrupted, you make a change that breaks everything and you have no idea what you did or why it stopped working, you can fix it. You can go back to a version that worked. You can lose a day's work, but you can get back to something that worked. So this is the absolute most important thing for any project because it's the thing that stops you from losing your project and having to start over. So if you watch one video out of this entire series, if you listen and apply anything from any of these videos or anything off my entire channel, this is the video because it's the only thing I'm confident is going to be accurate in you know, five years, 10 years, 100 years, this video is still going to be relevant, even if you know, source control changes, it evolves, the concept is still going to be there, and you should be using it. So let's talk about how. So I'm going to use GitHub. There's also Bitbucket. Uh, there's probably other things. I don't know. I use GitHub. Uh, most people use GitHub. It's awesome. So once you've created an account and uh, logged in, you should see a screen Something like this, maybe not exactly like this. The most important part is you see that top bar. And in that top bar, we got a plus button. So we're gonna hit that plus button and say new repository. A repository is what we call the bucket that you put all of your bits in. It's where your code goes uh, and lots of other stuff. So uh, my project doesn't have a name yet. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna be building yet. So I'm just going to call it Let's Game Dev. And I don't have a description. I'm going to make this private because as of right now, this project is not going to be public. So now we create our repository. So this is telling you how to get the, the code, which is empty right now, but we're, we're getting to that. This is an important and kind of awkward step. I remember the first time I started using source, source control. This part didn't make any sense to me. So the repository has been defined up in the cloud in GitHub, but we need to figure out a way to get it down onto our computer so that we can add things to it and push it back up to the cloud, make it safe, make it so we can access it from other computers and share the code with other developers. Uh, but it's not on our computer yet, even though it's empty, even though I have this project here, you know, you can't really merge these yet. So it's telling you how to get this down in your computer. This is pretty important. So we're going to grab this URL. And now how you do the next step can be a bit different. And again, there's other tutorials out there for other uh, programs you can use to do this. I use a program called SourceTree. Uh, SourceTree is built by Atlassian. They're the people who manage Bitbucket, but we're using GitHub. That's OK. Uh, and you can use the GitHub uh, desktop app with Bitbucket. It, you can even use a command line if you really want to get all nerdy up in this. So I installed uh, source, source tree, and this is mostly what it looks like. You'll have a new tab and these buttons up at the top. So we're cloning. We're taking a repository that is up in the cloud, and we are making a local copy of it. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the, the term clone, uh, because once we've got it down, we're going to be changing it and pushing it back up. So it's not like a separate entity. Uh, well, you can clone other repos and 
make changes and not push it up and do your own version of it called sometimes called forking. Uh, that's not what we're doing. It's most likely not what you're doing. So we're going to clone this and uh, put it on a local machine and start making changes. So uh, I pasted in that URL from back here. Uh, it's going to check to make sure it's valid. It seems valid. I don't want to put it in my user folder. So I'm going to go to my GM folder, select this folder. And then uh, I don't want to put this like right in my root folder uh, of my game maker project folder. So I'm going to add one more name. Let's call it uh, let's game dev. And don't worry about this folder thing this is like an organizational folder like groups in uh, game maker. So you don't need to worry about that. We're going to clone it. And this should be very quick because there's nothing up here. You can see a totally empty history. So let's get something up there. Uh, if we open up, you can click this Explorer button in Source Tree. And it's going to open that folder up in Windows Explorer, which is up here. There we go. Uh, there it is. It's just an empty folder with this guy, the .git. Don't touch that folder. Leave it there, right in the root. Don't move it. Just leave it alone. Uh, but that means we're in the right place. So now we need to get our project in there. So I've already started this project. It's saved somewhere on my hard drive, not there. Uh, most likely you have a project that you've started and you want to get into source control and you just followed these steps, but your project's not in that folder. You could just cut and paste that uh, project into this folder. That would work. Uh, I'm just going to use the save project as. And, uh, well, there we are. It's right there. I'm going to call it... Let's game dev. And then we can go back to this folder. There's my, there's my project folder. Uh, you could come in here and like you know, move these files out and say, okay, right in my GM let's game dev folder is my project. So you, so, so you don't get this GM let's game dev, let's game dev. But I do this on purpose. Uh, I keep my project folder like this. And then out here is all of the things related to my game that aren't in the game project themselves. I might have all my art assets. I might have a builds folder that has releases of the game or demos. I might have uh, sound effects, music, uh, things that got added to my project, but maybe I have the raw source files or maybe the Photoshop files for images or sprite you know, sources that uh, you haven't added to your project itself. They, you just use these files to build your assets. So I like to keep it in its own folder within the repository. So now that we've added that, let's go back to source tree and this will refresh automatically. And you can see we have uncommitted changes. So you can see that either on the file status or the history. So we're going to go to the file status tab and we've got all of this stuff. Uh, so we need to commit this. We need to get it up ready to go into the cloud. So you can see all these question mark icons. It means these are brand new files that we haven't added yet. So because it's a brand new project and a brand new repository. So we're going to stage all. Uh, you can do these individually with the little plus signs and unstage with the minus signs. So you can see it's adding a new file. Uh, or you just say stage all. We want all these files. Uh, and uh, we need to write a little message. So this is our initial commit. Hit the commit button. And now we have an item in our history called initial commit. This history is going to get very long. The longer your project goes, this thing's going to get longer and longer. And that's okay. You want to be committing as often as possible, as often as is reasonable. Uh, Typically, I like to think of it as a, whenever I complete a task, then, or if I'm about to do something very scary, that's a good time to commit. So you finished getting jumping into your game, time to commit. You fix the bug with jumping where you could clip through the wall, time to commit. You uh, are about to do a major find and replace in your project to rename a whole bunch of stuff. Definitely time to commit. You want to lock that uh, that time, that place in history in your project, so that if anything goes wrong, 
you just double click on it in source trace. It will have a whole bunch of lines here and you just go back, go back in time and get to a version of your project that didn't have that issue. So we've done that. We've made our initial commit, but our project's not safe yet. It's still just stored locally on our machine. So again, if my computer exploded, I would have lost all of my hard work on this empty project. Uh, we don't want that. We want to put it up into the cloud and make sure that if this computer dies or if I just move to another computer, if I have another computer I want to develop on, I can just take the same code down off the cloud and keep working right, where I was, right from where I was. That's another good reason to commit often is uh, it always sucks to get to another machine uh, and start devving and you realize, ah, oh, got uncommitted changes on my other machine and I can't get to those changes now. So I can't really keep working on my project because I need to have those changes before I can make more progress. So commit often, please commit often. Uh, and just as important, you need to push. So this button up here, push, I'm gonna click that and it's gonna ask you what branch you wanna push to. We're not gonna worry too much about branching in a personal project that you're working on solo. Branching is not going to be something you do very commonly. So we're gonna have our master branch, the remote branch is master, so that's the branch that's you know, whatever it's called up on GitHub, which is probably gonna be master. We're pushing it, we're gonna push it. Hit the push button. Now it's in the cloud. Now your project is safe. Uh, so anytime you commit, yeah, you get that history item local machine, but until it says origin up here, you haven't actually uh, pushed anything up. In fact, let's go make a change and see what it looks like now that we have pushed. So I'm gonna rename uh, room one to room init, and I'm going to add an object, object, object one. I'm just gonna delete this later. So there, we got a change. I've saved my project and save, go back to source tree. And now it recognizes I have uncommitted changes up here. And I'm gonna stage all. I'm gonna say, uh, renamed room one to room init. This is kind of a silly commit, but commit that. And now we have our history item. So if I wanted to, I could jump back here, just double click. I can't do that until I push. But you can just double click around to move back and forth between different history items, which is super cool. Uh, but you can see here, I've got my local master and then origin master. Origin means what's up in the cloud. So these are not on the same line, which means I have things that have not been pushed up and would not be available if I were to move to another machine. Or if my computer died, it would be gone forever. So fortunately, it's got this nice handy bubble up here on the push button that says, here's all the stuff you're gonna lose if, everything, if you accidentally deleted your project, uh, push this button, right? Do it as often as possible. If there's a number up here, there's really no reason unless your project is absolutely enormous and it takes hours to upload to the cloud, no reason not to hit this button as soon as you're done committing. You're gonna hit push and push. And now master and origin master are on the same line and we're safe. So now that we've got source control, we can dev without fear. Our project is never going to be lost as long as we maintain those good habits of pushing, uh, committing, just get into the habit. No matter, like start doing it way too often. Like that was probably too often. I don't need to push every time I rename, but I'd say if you're working on a feature, working on a bug, anything, once you get to that point where you push play and it works, that's time to commit. And uh, hopefully as we go through this, this series, you'll see me doing it uh, bare minimum at the beginning and ending of, well, at the ending of every video. Uh, but more likely you'll see it incrementally throughout the video, just so you can get an idea of how often I do it. So there you go. Now that we've got source control set up, ready to game dev proper.